Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. So today we're talking more about exponents, both uh, numbers with exponents and variables with exponents. In part one of this little exponent series, talked about combining things like 5 squared times 5 cubed equaling 5 to the fifth and 5 squared cubed equaling 5 to the sixth. So if you want to see that video, there's a link in the description below to that video. Uh, touched on negative exponents. We're going to go a little more on negatives, a little on division, and then also on um, if you have the same power but a different base. Now I mentioned last time I showed as an example saying you can't multiply this and say, oh, that's 36 and 2 plus 3 is 5. That doesn't work. However, there is something similar to this that does work. And I think it's kind of cool, but then I like math, so I'm going to think a lot of things math related are cool. That's just the way it is. So for example, let's say I had 5 squared times 3 squared. Now all the ones we were doing in part 1 had the same base. And when we had the same base, we combined the exponents by adding. Well, we don't have the same base, but this time we do have the same exponents. In order to combine these, one of these things, either the base or the exponent has to be the same. If they are both different, if I have different bases and different exponents, like in the previous example, what was it again? 12 squared times three cubed, something along those lines, then I can't just easily combine them with a simple rule. This one we can. Why is that? Well, let's look at what this actually is. Five squared is five times five. Three squared is three times three. And I'm multiplying those together. Well, commutative property of multiplication, always with the fancy names in math, we love those fancy names, means I can move things around, I can change the order when I'm multiplying things, and the answer is still the same. Sorry, I have allergies right now, there's so much pollen. I am trying so hard not to cough or clear my throat. It's horrible. Skyrocketing pollen today, not that you care, but anyway. <laughs> so, 5 times 5 times 3 times 3. Commutative says I can move them around, so let's move it around. I'm going to put this 3 right there, and that will make it 5 times 3 times 5 times <laughs> times 3. There we go. So that is 5 times 3 is 15. Huge truck just drove by my house. Times 5 times 3, that's also 15. So that's 15 times 15. Well, another way of writing any number like 15 times itself is 15 squared. So 5 squared times 3 squared is 15 squared. Do you see what's happening here? I would have gotten that answer as a shortcut by keeping my exponent the same but multiplying the bases. 5 times 3 is 15. Let's do another one of those just to show you this is always going to work. What if I had, we'll say, 4 cubed times 2 cubed times 5 cubed? Now, according to our rule, that should be 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 5 is 40, and I leave my exponent the same, 40 cubed. Well, let's just write it all out. 4 times 4 times 4 times 2, times 2, times 2, times 5, times 5, times 5. Reorder things to make little matching pairs. 4 times 2, times 5, times 4, times 2, times 5, times 4, times 2, times 5. And sure enough, we've got our three pairs. 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 5 is 40. Same again, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 5 is 40, and last but not least, my last 40. 40 times 40 times 40 is 40 cubed. 
it checks out. So again, remember either or, either the base has to all be the same and then we can add those exponents to get an answer or the exponent has to be the same and then we multiply the bases. And this is the reason why. If you, I find, um, I, I tell students this a lot that I've, that I've tutored in the past and over the years, uh, hate to admit how many years I've been tutoring kids, but anyway, if you have to on a little scrap piece of paper or something, if it's in a test and you forget this rule, there's no shame in writing it out if it helps you remember to remember the rule because you know everyone forgets things that are just straight memorized but if you understand what's going on like this and you need to write it down like on the side and just kind of like okay remember how this is I'll write out four times four times four see what's happening it's okay you know it's what helps you remember and what helps you learn the concept Okay, the other thing which we mentioned, touched on in the last one, but I like to go over it in a little more detail, is negative exponents. And this is going to lead into division. We're going to segue in nicely. And that's segue. <laughs> Again. <laughs> I can't even win myself today. And that's segue, not segue. Don't know why I said that, but whatever. Okay, so that's going to let us segue nicely into division. So here are the negative exponents, just as a reminder from the previous lesson. When we have something like five to the power of negative two, all this means is one over five to the power of two. That's all that negative does. It makes it a fraction. It inverts it. Makes it the reciprocal. You know, we might think like, oh, five to the power of negative two. That means five times five, but make it negative. Nope, 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 nope. This right here is it. It's not necessarily intuitive that that's what it does, but that's what it does. All right. So another thing we mentioned in the previous one is if I had, when we were multiplying, say something like five cubed times five to the power of negative one, it would be the same as this, five times five times five, and we'd be multiplying times one over five to the first, which would make it like this. And then those cancel out and it's five squared. So you go, okay, three plus negative one is two. It works, five, you know, that rule that we have about adding the exponents. So here's a little question. This doesn't, all right, we're just gonna clear it out since the whiteboard is having fits apparently and just does not want to behave today. If I have this right here, which we wrote as five to the third times five to the negative one. If I didn't know that, if I didn't know this was a representation of five to the third times five to the negative one, what might this also be? This also could be five to the third divided by five to the power of negative, of power of one or just five. Okay, so five to the third divided by five to the first or five. Now we don't normally think of five as just being five to the first, but it is. So here's another one that probably looks a little more like what you'd be expecting. What if I said five times five times five times five divided by five times five? I could write that as five to the power of four divided by five squared. Well, what am I going to get here? Well, I can cancel out when things are being multiplied in a fraction, I can cancel out terms that are the same on top and bottom. So five and five, five and five. I'm left with five times five, five squared or 25 as my answer. So five to the fourth divided by five 
squared is 5 squared. Now when we were multiplying, you can probably see where I'm going with this, when we were multiplying we added our exponents. What happened here? We subtracted 4 minus 2 equals 2, which makes sense. Multiplication and division are inverses of each other. They're opposites. So if we are having things with the same base and we multiply them, we add the exponents. So here we have the same base and we're dividing. We subtract those exponents. Okay, so again, just a couple little sample things here just to make sure everyone knows and we're, we're all on the same page. So just again, as a, a little reminder here, if I have five to the power of negative three, all this means is one over five to the power of three. It inverts it, makes it reciprocal. If I have five to the power of six times five to the power of negative three, that is five to the power of three. I can add those exponents because it is the same as one, two, three, four, five, six, divided by five times five times five. And why do I say it's the same? Is because I am doing five to the power of six times one over five times five times five, because that's what the negative does. When I multiply those things, I get this. Then when I'm multiplying, I can cancel out things that match on the top and bottom. That leaves five cubed, five cubed, ta-da. That's our proof for our answer. Likewise, it just does not want to go up in the corner. Likewise, if I had just written it as five to the six divided by five to the positive three, which is the same thing, these are saying the same thing, times five to the negative three or divided by five to the power of three, same difference. In this case, I subtract the exponents to get, I have a three, six minus three is three. And as you'll notice, same answer for those two. Okay, so those are our uh, negative exponents, dividing and combining in a quick review of, of when we're multiplying. All right, so I think that's enough for part two. In part three, which will be linked to below, we will be talking about fractional exponents, like five to the power of one half, things of that sort. So look forward to that. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was helpful. And please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. It all helps. If there's anything else you need help with, we have a lot of videos in the playlist and uh, just on the channel itself. Hope you have a great day. Bye.